All right, survive and advance the name of the game. I actually have the wrong background here, so let me change this. Bit of a busy day. John Schaefer with you on the wrap-up show, presented by my friend Eric Lanier at Higher Impact Financial. Make your way in San Diego State and Yale. We'll meet Sunday. Time to be determined. We'll know the time of Sunday's game once all of these games on Friday are concluded. So if you're watching this on replay, um, we'll, you'll know um, probably as you watch this. But again, San Diego State and Yale, um, is it surprising? Yeah, a little bit from the Yale perspective. But, um, you know, if you watch this tournament, you know this happens. Oakland, obviously, last night over Kentucky. Yale today over Auburn. And uh, it's the madness of this tournament. It's um, what makes this thing so great, one and done aspect of it. And more importantly, San Diego State beat UAB. And the way they did so was impressive, in my opinion. Um, we knew this would be a close game. I think if you were listening to what we had talked about this past week on the wrap-up show or on the radio or if you were – reading about how good UAB was and the type of basketball that they were playing. This was never going to be some type of cakewalk. Um, despite the fact that the Aztecs jumped out to a large lead in the first half, I think they had it out to 11. They were 11 of their first 16, I think, from their floor. Um, and then they had it back to 12 at some point, about 10 minutes into the second half. But UAB made a couple of runs, a couple of second half runs, got back in the game. Not only did they get back in the game, they actually took a lead couple of times, and that's where San Diego State just showed its resiliency, its grit, its fight, its experience, and just made plays. I mean, obviously, a lot of people are going to talk about Jaden Ledee here tonight. I thought Jaden was absolutely spectacular. I mean, 32 points in an NCAA tournament game is not easy to do, obviously. So he goes for 32 points. They did not double him. You know, they played a lot of that 1-3-1 one, one we talked about. They played 2-3. Um, they mixed and matched, but what they didn't do was double, and obviously Jaden took advantage of that. He had 11 of the first 13 points for the Aztecs. And in addition to that, he made critical plays down the stretch, hit big free throws. So Jaden goes for 13 points and eight rebounds. But in addition to Jaden, I thought Lamont Butler played one of his better games, really, of his career. He was so in control at both ends. He had 15 points. He had critical free throws. He had four steals. He had four assists. So on a night where Jaden scores the most points for San Diego State in the history of the NCAA tournament, nobody had ever scored 32 points in a game until – Jaden did it tonight. Lamont joins Jamal Franklin as the only ever to have 15 points, four assists, and four rebounds in NCAA tournament games. So Jaden and Lamont led the way, but this is a team effort. Like, you're not winning in the NCAA tournament against capable teams, which is basically everyone that you're going to see, without playing good team basketball. Um, and that's what San Diego State, I thought, did here today. Um, as, again, they won the game 69-65. I thought I had a box score in front of me. Um, I had one just a moment ago, but, you know, again, they made plays uh, when they needed to make plays. They went down three a couple of times in the second half. And again, they never, um, it didn't feel as if they were feeling the pressure, right? It didn't feel as if they got sped up. It didn't feel as if they were forcing anything. And there were some huge moments, obviously late uh, Lamont Butler at the free throw line with a critical one and one hit two free throws, uh, high, low action from Jay Powell to Jaden Ledee, that little fadeaway jumper from Lamont in the lane, was the thing of beauty. Um, so they made plays is what they did. And then they defended those final four, five, six possessions. If you watch it back, I want to say UOP was one for its last eight, oh for its last four. Um, and it took some contested shots. San Diego State made it really tough on UAB when it mattered most. And again, UAB, give them credit. Um, Andy Kennedy, head coach at UAB, his alma mater, he had his team ready. They have some really talented players. Their point guard, Eric Gaines, Yaxel Lendenberg, I think is a terrific player who's in foul trouble for a lot of this game. So, you know, again, they deserve credit for the way that they played, but San Diego State deserves credit as well for the way they were able to pull it out here today. All right, so make your way, and I'll be with you for the next, uh, let's say, 45 minutes or so. If you have questions or comments, you can get those in. Please subscribe here on content for Aztec fans. You can smash the like button for me. Follow me on X or Twitter at John Schaefer. That is J-O-N-S-C-H-A-E-F-F-E-R. Appreciate the super chats. Uh, I'll get to all of those. This will be hopefully a good amount of people in the chat, whether it's live or on replay. I'll get to the super chats. Great way to support the channel. Just click the dollar sign below the chat box. And if you want to become a member, you can click join by clicking that join button down below. You'll get custom emojis and badges. Um, but again, I think that um, I read some of the post-game comments from Brian Dutcher because I was on the air. And, like, Dutch was asked, like, hey, was the team nervous? Um, you know, is the higher seed coming off what happened last year? And I agree with, you know, the way he kind of uh, summarized it in his postgame comments. He was like, well, I don't think really we were. It's more of a credit to UAB with what they did in the second half. I thought the Aztecs, for the first 12 minutes of the game, might have played some of their best offense of the year. Uh, the way they spread the floor, the way they were able to get Jaden Lee in spots where he could score, right, facing up, 
single coverage. I think San Diego State was 11 of 16 from the floor to start the game um, against a team that won five straight and won the American Championship. So that was really good. Now they were one of 12 to finish the first half, but I still thought they were getting looks, which was important. And then UAB really shot it well out of the gates in the second half. I think at one point I looked up and they were, I think, five for the first eight, maybe at one point even something like 10 of 16 from the floor in the second half, maybe nine of 16 from the floor in the second half. But then again, San Diego State kind of clamped down in the final six minutes of the game, five minutes of the game. Um, and you could just see it in their eyes. You could see it the way that they were connected on the defensive end. They really just wanted it. Um, and they made some additional plays and they were really good from the free throw line. And sometimes, you know, it's a simple game, isn't it? You got to make free throws. And they did. Um, and if you don't hit free throws, who knows? Maybe it's UAB moving on and it's UAB Yale. But the Aztecs, I think Jaden was nine of 10. Lamont was five of six. That's a really good combination. And, you know, UAB got to the free throw line a ton, which was their MO. That's what they're known for. They drive, they get downhill. They're big, they're physical. They kind of remind you a little bit of San Diego State, um, you know, to, to some extent. I think when in watching that game, they have some of those athletes. Um, but again, the Aztecs made enough plays down the stretch to win the game and advance to the second round. It's been a, an amazing couple of years, obviously, under Brian Butcher. I mean, beyond a couple of years, but what they're doing here in the NCAA tournament, and it's kind of like deja vu all over again, as Yogi Berra would say, because you have a chance to advance by going through a 13 seed. You go back to last year. San Diego State, I remember it so vividly. We were in Orlando, um, Amway Center, home of the home of the Magic, and the first game of the day wasn't the Aztecs. It was Furman, Virginia, and I was on uh, the pregame show getting ready for the game, doing the countdown to tip-off on the radio, and right in front of me, I was already doing pregame because we were inside 30 or 40 minutes out, and right in front of me was that unbelievable play that transpired. Virginia had a lead. Um, one of their guards maybe was trapped in the backcourt. He heaved it into the front court. It was stolen by Furman, one pass to the right wing, and a kid hit a three, and Furman advanced. And then what's amazing about today is I decided to stick around for the second game. Sometimes over the last couple of weeks, I'll leave at halftime of that second game, um, and head back to a hotel or, you know, start doing work for the next game or grab a bite to eat. But I just had a feeling it was going to be a, a competitive second half. Auburn led by seven at the intermission. Chad Baker, Mazzaro. Absolutely crucial. Um, that was about three or four minutes into the game. Auburn really play, came out of the gates playing good basketball. Baker Mazar is a terrific offensive player, as we know. Really terrific player. He's had a very good year for Auburn, and he was ejected. And I thought that really changed the complexion of the game. Um, despite all that, Auburn had a 10-point lead. Um, yeah, I had a 10-point lead with, I don't know, six minutes, seven minutes to play in the game. And Yale um, hit some big-time shots. Hit some big-time shots. They've got a terrific big man. Uh, they got a guard that can really shoot it. And they just kind of hung around. I mean, they they just hung around in the game. And then they made plays defensively. Like they they held off Auburn at the end, two or three shots at the rim for Auburn to potentially maybe tie it or win it. And then they, they you know, celebrated like it was, you know, Furman a year prior, as they should, upset Auburn in Spokane. So um, I think Yale's a very dangerous team. I thought UAB was a dangerous team. I really did. Um, and I think there are similarities, not in the way that they play necessarily or in the teams, but similarities in the fact that both of them are dangerous. Um, a year ago, again, the Essex had to go through Furman and San Diego State really had their way. Uh, for the better part of all 40 minutes in that game, maybe after six or eight minutes, they kind of created separation. But, you know, if you know anything about the way the Ivy League has played the last couple of years, Princeton making it all the way to a Sweet 16 last year, Yale right now coming off a win over Auburn, which metrically is a top 10 team in the nation. This will not be easy, obviously, for San Diego State, but it does create an opportunity. Um, and the Aztecs have the opportunity to go through Yale to get to another Sweet 16, looking for their fourth since 2011 and their second in each of the last two years. And you can't get ahead of yourself. You just can't. I mean, you can't look to East Regional and what might be coming. And, you know, just like we talked about all week, I mean, you can't, you know, look past UAB and say, man, a date with Auburn would be pretty cool and Chad Baker Mazar because look now. First of all, Auburn isn't even there. And also, um, if not for finishing off this game, um, you know, you know that UAB was a capable, capable team and they were – potentially going to move on here today. So it, re it reminds you, again, when I say it's deja vu, it does remind me a little bit of Orlando, not just the circumstances of the 13s moving on, but the circumstance of needing to fight through that first game. And guys, it's hard. Look around the country. Kentucky losing to Oakland. Yale beating Auburn. There are other examples, obviously, of upsets over the last 48 hours. It's hard. Um, and you go back to last year, and San Diego State was put in a position where they had to close a game out against Charleston. That game was tied at 57, I want to say, 
with three minutes to play, and Matt Bradley made a couple of plays down the stretch. Micah Parrish hit a big three in that game, and the Aztecs survived a serious challenge from Charleston, and then really got going downhill. Furman, obviously. Then they get to Louisville, take big swings, beat some of the you know premier programs in the country last year, Alabama and Creighton, and make it all the way to a Final Four. So it just feels like once you get one under your belt, you're able to play a little freer and looser and take bigger swings, so to speak. That's how it feels, watching it play out. There's um, a level of tightness that often plays out with higher-seeded teams. Now, I didn't really see it today with San Diego State. I, I just didn't see it. In fact, I saw resolve. I saw resiliency, and I, th- I saw experience, and I saw trust is what I saw today. But with that being said, there's something about that first game for almost every team in the country. Maybe some ones can cruise by 16s. You look up, and there's random games like Gonzaga over at Nice, obviously, um, where they won by a lot. So, of course, there's games where teams win by a lot that are higher seeded. But there's a lot of dogfights that come down to the final couple of minutes. And that's what we've seen over the last couple of days here in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Like, I'm watching a game right now. Duke has pulled away from Vermont. But, you know, this was a six-point game with something like five or six minutes to play. So you just don't know. That That's the beauty of this tournament. It's why it's an American love affair. Essentially, March Madness is one of the great sporting events in this country. And San Diego State is obviously fortunate. Um, and Aztec fans, I'm, I'm sure, are thrilled that the Aztecs have uh, survived and advanced to play on to the second round. So San Diego State and Yale on Sunday. Again, we're going to find out a time coming up at some point later tonight once these games go final. Full slate, obviously, tonight. Um, for those watching on replay, it's not really, uh, you know, you're not really going to care about the the live scores. So I won't go through the live scores, but still games to come, including a game between St. Mary's and Grand Canyon later here tonight in Spokane. A couple of teams the Aztecs played this year. They're in a different pod in a different region, but the way it shakes out, they're also playing in Spokane. And by the way, the atmosphere in the arena was terrific today for that morning into afternoon session. I thought the Aztec fans were terrific here today. Um, huge contingent, large cheering section. Really vocal, very supportive, uh, typical Aztec fashion, and um, I think it played a role. I think they announced a sellout. It was over 11,000. It's a smaller building. It's a really good building for the first and second rounds of the NCAA tournament, a lot like Viejas Arena. There are similarities. I like Viejas more, but this is a good building for first and second round NCAA tournament action. And like San Diego, it's a great basketball town. Obviously, they have Gonzaga. Um, And, you know, they, they have, you know, passion for college basketball like a lot of San Diegans do because of the success of San Diego State. So I think it's the right setting for it. Um, I'm excited to see what the crowd looks like on Sunday. Yale had a lot of fans here tonight, just like San Diego State had a lot of fans and maybe some additional Aztec fans will make it up to the Pacific Northwest or find their way to the game on Sunday for San Diego State and Yale. All right, if you have uh, questions or comments and you want to get them into the live chat, I'll do my best to react to as many as I can here. Um, it's six fifteen, so I could probably be with you for another thirty or forty-five minutes. And again, if you're just making your way in, maybe it's your first time consuming this content. I'm at, you know, I'm downtown. I'm in my hotel, obviously, in uh, in Spokane. But if it's your first time here, please subscribe. Year-round content for Aztec fans. So if it's your first time here, please subscribe. Have that year-round content for Aztec fans. If you wouldn't mind smashing the like button, I'd appreciate that. You can find me on X at John Schaefer, J O N S C H A E F F E R. And again, thank you for the super chats. Click the dollar sign below the chat box. Thank you for the memberships as well. Um, okay, yeah, and by the way, I'll start actually this with Tom. So I very rarely do this. Let me run through this. You know, it's, it's the NCAA tournament. So, you know, you're just taking it in. And last year I was on the air for that Furman UVA play. I didn't, you know, record it on my phone. Very rarely do I do that on my phone. Even going back last year to the Final Four, there's some video of like my reaction to us be- beating FAU, but I wasn't recording in real time. Like I wasn't, I didn't have my camera out or my phone out recording video. Today, for whatever reason, the final possession of Yale and Auburn, I decided to do it. I just felt like something was potentially going to happen that should be like recorded on my phone and I was sitting on press row. So I'm recording the final possession, no deal, you know, and then uh, Yale wins the game. Okay, great for them. I'm just recording it and, you know, posting, hey, Yale moves on to take on San Diego State to show their obviously like visceral reaction to winning in the NCAA tournament as a 13 seed. And all of a sudden one or two players race over to the table where I am seated and jump onto the table. I'm recording. I think they're going to like stumble onto me. I didn't even know how to react. I just keep recording for like another 10 or 15 seconds. And then I stopped because I thought the guy was going to break my laptop, whatever player jumped up or spill water or like trample me. 
Uh, but yes, that did play out. They literally stood over me. I was just, I was just observing. I was just like an independent observer because I love the NCAA tournament in March Madness. I wanted to see how it played out. Was Armour going to win it at the buzzer? Was he going to hold on and celebrate as a 13 seed? And yes, that actually happened today in Spokane. Um, didn't envision that coming into the day, if I'm being honest. Um, all right, let's see here, guys. I mean, obviously it starts with Ladine. Maria, how are you? I mean, the way he was able to have success immediately at Gates because they did not double him all game long. And you're thinking to yourself, well, how, how can you do that against Jaden Ladee? Well, they caused some problems with the Aztecs because of the way they defended them, and they tried to prevent touches, but initially they weren't able to do that. And every time Jaden got the ball, he was able to finish. He hit an early three, had a couple of jumpers, was able to get to the rim, got to the free throw line. So, right, I mean, he had 18 points and a half. Now he finishes with 32, which is a massive total, but 18 of his 32 – came in the first half. So I thought maybe we'd see some amount of doubling in the second half, but that's just not the way they defend. And they, you know, they kept it out of his hands for a good portion of the second half, but every time he touched it, he would get fouled. He would hit his free throws. He's just hard. I mean, everyone knows it. Maybe you, you know, you've watched him in the Mountain West. You watched him in the non-conference. He's just so impactful that he did it again here today under the brightest lights. And in addition to Jaden, I just thought they were running really good offense. You know, in the first half, Reese Waters hit a three, had a jumper, had five points. Lamont Butler was having success throughout the course of the game. I thought Darion was very under control. Elijah hit a first half three. I thought Miles Heidi, I know he only played a couple of minutes spelling Jaden, but I thought he played a good couple of minutes um, here today. I mean, obviously, you've had the emergence of these sophomores in the second half of the year. I think Miles Bird and Elijah Saunders have been critically important to San Diego State. I think that continues moving forward for the Aztecs. Obviously, Sunday, hopefully beyond there and into 2024, 25. But I mean, they're playing the second half of the year has been truly special. Um, Jay Powell was in some early foul trouble, but had some big rebounds, obviously, for the Aztecs. Um, so it takes a team. It just does. I mean, it takes a team. And again, I should have a box score in front of me. I just don't. Um, but let me pull one up real quick while I have a moment, because I want to pull it up. Because I want to, there were a couple things that stood out earlier that I, I want to mention. Like, I'll, I'll give you this example. Like, Elijah comes off the bench and plays 23 minutes. Like, like that's really good production coming off the bench. Um, again, Lamont Butler, you're not going to get a lot of lines like this. 15 points, five of nine shooting. He hit a couple of tough shots, and he was able to get to the basket and finish and had a ferocious slam. But 15 points, four steals, four assists is a monster game. Now, Darion, you might say, well, he only had four points. Yeah, he played 32 minutes in this game. He played 32 minutes um, and played really well. Obviously, Jaden, we talked about um, Jay Powell, Micah Paris, 25 minutes in this game. Off your bench, Miles Hottie did end up playing five minutes. You had Saunders play 23, Bird play 13. Hit, I thought, a big triple in the second half, a really big catch-and-shoot triple when UAB got close. That big moment for Miles Bird in the second half. And Reese Waters, he finishes two of eight. But again, I think there were signs of encouragement. What were they? The early three. He hit a tough two. He finished the game off by hitting a free throw with 3.5 seconds left when it was a three-point game. And if you don't hit a free throw there, then UAB conceivably could still tie it with some type of long, crazy shot. But it is the NCAA tournament. So, yes, it's a long way of saying yes, Ladie, but really yes to the team. Uh, Leon saying SDSU continues to carry the Mountain West. I, you know, listen. Rightfully so, we have spent a lot of time talking about the Mountain West this year. San Diego State's in the Mountain West. They play 18 games against Mountain West opponents. The league had a lot of success, and it did. The league had a lot of success. And the truth is that the league, other than San Diego State in this year's tournament, or really in, in previous tournaments, has had their struggles. Now, this year you did have a Colorado State win over Virginia in the first four before they lost to Texas. They didn't even shoot 30% yesterday. Uh, the Nevada loss obviously was very troublesome. They had a large lead. Uh, New Mexico was blown out today by Clemson. That really surprised me. And then Utah State's going to play in about an hour or less than that, maybe 45 minutes or so. I would just say this if you're an Aztec fan. And again, I, I do a lot of Mount West basketball. I consume it. I watch it. I enjoy it. Um, I'm not really overly concerned about the success or failure of the Mount West other than San Diego State. Like, I'll give you this point. Um, you know, heading into the tournament, I wanted to see a level of, of you know, success from – from the league. And I do think it's advantageous overall for everyone involved and there's financial benefits as well. But do you really want to see the other five teams advance, but SDU not advance? And are you really going to feel great about that? Like if New Mexico is in the sweet 16 and you go home and around the 64, like, is that making you sleep better? It's about San Diego state at this point. This isn't SEC, SEC, SEC. Nobody's chanting mountain West, mountain West, mountain West. I mean, are you really going to be high-fiving your neighbor if Boise state's in a final four? 
or if Nevada's in the national championship game. I know. I don't think you will. This is about San Diego State this time of year. It's good for San Diego State when the league is good. And I think the league has been good and will continue to be good. But um, this is about the Aztecs is what I would say right now. Um, like, again, I don't – some like here, Drax saying frustrated with the Mountain West sucking again, but at least San Diego State doesn't really – care they're stinking I mean, who cares is what i would say it it doesn't have a direct impact you might say well the financial benefit san diego state is is not going to rely i mean san diego state doesn't play college basketball to get an additional unit from a utah state ncaa tournament win. again you'll take it all you you want to have the league have success there are financial benefits but first and foremost without question is the success of san diego state over the success of other teams in the league is what i would say um brandon what's going on man i think we might have communicated earlier in the week or you may have been here uh, when i did a preview show on sunday or monday or whenever i did it he said uab and padres fan here good game aztecs go on another run i thought by the way both brian dutcher and andy kennedy so so classy post game let me find these quotes that i put on x uh, both of them so so classy one in victory the other in defeat let me just read a portion of andy kennedy he's a veteran head coach he played for Bob Huggins, he coached at Cincinnati and Ole Miss, and now he's his alma mater. He's done a hell of a job at UAB. I mean, he really has. But here's his quote post game. Uh, first of all, congratulations to San Diego State. You know, when your name pops up in that line, and we had to, we knew that our only opportunity to participate in this tournament was to get the automatic bid. We get that auto bid on Sunday through great play from my guys, earn the right to be here, and then you see San Diego State pop up. Great respect for the job that started with Steve Fisher and now continues with Brian Dutcher. As you start preparing for an uncommon opponent, the thing that pops out at you is their physicality, their toughness, how they literally give you zero free shots. I think, honestly, that has allowed them to continue to play in this tournament. Really, really tough. We had no answer for Ledee. Congratulations to them. That was his opening statement. I mean, that you can't be more complimentary in an opening statement than that. And then Brian Dutch today saying this, first of all, congratulations to UAB on that standing season. They were the ultimate opponent. It went back and forth, and we were fortunate to win. I told the team after the game that experience means something. I think all that experience we got last year paid off. When they came back, took a lead, we didn't panic. We stayed focused. We played hard, and we found a way to win. I know there are a lot of NCAA records, but if there's one for putting fouls on a guy, I think Jane Ledee would have it right now. He's hard to guard. He puts a lot of fouls on people. We find him, and to his credit, he plays unselfishly. He moves the ball easily, but when his time comes, he was ready for it. Lamont down the stretch, I just ran high ball screens for Lamont, let him create space and opportunities for his teammates. So I couldn't be any more proud of these two. He had Ledee and Butler on the podium sitting up here with me tonight. I just thought that was terrific from both coaches. And, you know, and there's something special about – the NCAA tournament and college athletics is not professional athlete, athletics. There are benefits. There's pros and cons to both of them. But I thought both coaches were just super classy in victory and defeat here today. Um, let's see here. Thank you, uh, Then 2002 or the end. Uh, is this the best season by an Aztec ever? Ladia is a dog. I mean, it, it's there. It, it is one of the best seasons in the history of the program. Obviously, your other All-Americans at San Diego State have been Michael Cage, and Kawhi Leonard and Malachi Flynn, some amazing players, not just at San Diego State, but nationally. Those are your All-Americans, AP All-Americans at San Diego State. And Ladee's season is right up there. Um, I think you could argue the merits, obviously, of Kawhi's sophomore year. Malachi Flynn, we never got a chance to see him in the NCAA tournament, which is a pure shame because of the global pandemic, not just Malachi, but Yanni Wetzel and KJ Fagan and that entire group, which is a special, special group. Uh, last year, we might have been talking about a second Final Four appearance in four years for San Diego State because we'll never know what would happen with 2020. But to your point, Jaden Ledee is having arguably the best season by an Aztec ever. And that is amazing. That is just, I mean, to just say that is truly, truly incredible stuff. Uh, Brian saying, yeah, played like they've been there before. I thought they did today down the stretch. I, I really, And by the way, and out of the gates. I thought they they looked to be the confident group out of the gates. Um and, you know, what was tough for UAB was that their star, Yaxel Lendenberg, was in foul trouble the entire game because he was trying to be physical with Ledee, and he was just unable to do it. And he picked up a couple of ticky-tack ones, truthfully, in the first half. He finally got going. I mean, he's a double-double machine. To hold him to 11-7 and seven is unbelievable because you watch this guy in film, and he's capable of 20-20. and 20. He really is. It comes easy to him. Um, and, you know, who went off? Um, you know, that guard went off, obviously, um, and hit five threes in the game. Um, where's this box score? Man, I'm all over the place, aren't I, guys? I apologize. Um, let me find the box score because you know who I'm talking about. Was it Butter Johnson? Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, Butter Johnson 
scored 19 points, hit five threes. Um, you know, down three, they drew up a play for him or he tried to get a three off. It was a really tough shot that missed, but he was their offense. And, you know, Gaines, it was tough on Gaines, I thought. He did a lot of his damage at the free throw line. He's a good player. I like him a lot. Um, he had 14 points, but on four of 12 shooting. Yes, he was six of six from the free throw line. I mean, Lendeberg had two field goals in the entire game. He was seven of eight from the free throw line. He did have three offensive rebounds. That is a great offensive rebounding team. It's a great rebounding team, but here's the thing. You look up at the team stats. First of all, UAB shot 37.7%, Aztecs 43.6%, which is good enough with, with their defense. And the Aztecs win shooting 27.8% from beyond the arc. I mean, think about that. They won by hitting just five threes. UAB hit seven. Free throw shooting was similar. Aztecs were plus two on the glass and even on the offensive glass. That was the key. That's what Brian Dutcher said. Spot on. That was the key. Nothing else was more important than that. Yes, UAB had second chance opportunities, but so did the Aztecs. Yes, UAB is a good rebounding team, but so is San Diego State. They made it a point of emphasis, and they did it more than well enough, or they did it well enough, obviously, to win here today. Kevin, what's going on, man? Uh, he says, let's go, John, for 12 minutes there in the first half. He saw a version of this team that shoots it and could beat anyone. Hope we get a little more of that Sunday. Um, yeah, I mean, Sunday obviously is going to be um, more of a challenge because you've got a team that's coming off a huge high in Yale that now believes that they're capable. They just beat a four seed. They'll be thinking, why can't we beat a five seed? Um, and Yale shot it pretty well. Let me see the overall. Their offensive numbers today were really good. Now, Auburn shot it well, too. Here are the team stats in this Yale 78-76 win. Auburn shot 51%. Auburn's a really good offensive team. I mean, they're good at both ends. They were top 10 metrically in offense and defense. They shot 51%. Here's where Yale was really good. Nine of 20 from beyond the arc. I mean, that'll keep you in most games. They also got to the free throw line 31 times. They were 21 of 31, which isn't terrific, but they were plus six on Auburn and made free throws in a two-point win. Now they got out rebounded by five. They only turned it over 11 times. That's a low number. They were plus three. They had 19 fast break points. That is a big number and to do against SDSU. They were outscoring the paint 32-22, but th they're a really good team. I mean, the Ivy League has been outstanding the last couple of years. And I don't know how to say the guard's last name. I'll, I'll learn it, but he had 28. He was 10 of 15 from the floor. He hit tough shots. I mean, I was right there for it. Wolf, their forward's a really good player. He was only 4 of 15 in this game, Danny Wolf. Um, they frustrated him, and, you know, Janai Broom is a terrific forward. But Wolf held his own, I thought. I mean, he had 13 points and five rebounds. You know, Broom was terrific. I don't know why he didn't have more touches. I guess he got a lot of them from the free throw line. 24 points, 13 rebounds, only 10 field goal attempts for Janai Broom. And Auburn going home, and that is a long way home from Spokane to the plains of Auburn. Um, all right, I'm going to get back to the comments in a moment. Got another 30 minutes or so if you guys want to hang out. And again, if you are here, please subscribe. Year-round content for Aztec fans. I do want to remind our viewers about our title sponsor here on the wrap-up show, my friend Eric Lanier at Higher Impact Financial. Guys, if you have any financial planning needs, let Eric um, take care of them. You can set up a free 15-minute consultation with Eric. I've done it recently. It is so worth your time for yourself and your family. Click the link in the description down below. You'll get to his website, which you see on screen right now. You're going to get whatever you need. Just a 15-minute free consultation. We'll talk to you about retirement. We'll talk to you about your taxes. We'll talk to you about your short-term, medium-term, and long-term financial goals. He can really help you save money, and he can help you secure your financial future as well. So if you support this channel, if you're an Aztec fan, so is Eric. He's based in Southern California. He is a huge Aztec fan. Click that link in the description down below. Get in contact with Eric Lanier. Let him know the wrap-up show sent you. So get in contact with him by clicking that link in the description down below and set up a free, absolutely free, 15-minute consultation. Let me have a sip of water. One of those days, one of those weeks, all good. Uh, SDSU Aztecs has got to turn those turnovers into more points than SDSU did next game. Um, hmm. Points off turnovers for SDSU. I want to say at one point it was 10 nothing. Again, I don't have the, the final box in front of me for whatever reason. Um, I'd have to look at that. I'd have to look at that SDSU Aztec. Uh, yeah, I thought they did. I mean, they, I thought um, they, they did hit some tough shots, and I thought they came out of the gates really shooting it well. I think they were three for the first four from beyond the arc. They're a good team. Good team playing with confidence. When you win your conference tournament, you really have the ultimate belief. Like you're heading into the tournament on a high. You've accomplished something of significance. It's never easy to go through an automatic qualifier. Um, or it's rarely easy to go through an automatic qualifier. Yale, by the way, 
is an AQ as well. The Ivy is different. It's just a game tournament that starts in the semifinal. They were kind of, not kind of, they were left for dead in the championship game, I think, against Brown. They came all the way back and won that game. Um, so they've got, obviously, confidence as well. And they've, they've played high major teams well this year, including, obviously, their biggest one of the year against Auburn today. Brian says, it's like SDSU builds their team to be successful in the NCAA tournament, while the other Mountain West teams build themselves to beat SDSU. Maybe that's why they all suck in the tournament. I, there's so many tournament factors. I go back to two years ago, and everyone's telling me about, you know, how San Diego State can't beat Creighton and they can't finish a game, or when they lost to Houston a handful of years ago, or the zone defense of Syracuse. Um, Matt, it's very matchup dependent. And um, yeah, I don't know what to say about the Mountain West overall this year in the tournament. And it's not over. I mean, obviously we have San Diego State. We'll see what happens tonight with Utah State. Colorado State did get one win to their credit. Um, you know, the, excuse me, the Mountain West was underdogs in a lot of these games. Underdogs in most of these games. And they've got two wins at this point. The Colorado State first four win, San Diego State in the round of 64, Utah State still to come, and, of course, the Aztecs against Yale still to come as well. Uh, let's see here. Saying, uh, Given how well Aztecs seem to be playing, almost surprising how close it was. Credit to UAB for hitting threes, and that lightning fast point guard hit a really quick, quick guard. I thought Butler and Trammell played them really well, really well. They wouldn't let him turn a corner. He did a couple of times. It was hard for him to get downhill. He says – He's a tricky little point guard. Aztecs have familiarity with good point guard play because of who they play in the Mountain West. And there's a lot of really good guards, a lot of really good guards. I like Eric Gaines a lot. I think he's a very good player. I like UAB's team a lot. I think they have, they got scores everywhere on the floor. Um, so the, I don't I don't know what the roster looks like next year. I know they were in the NIT championship uh, last year. They lost 85% of the scoring and then boom, here they are, you know, with 20 something wins and in a, you know, tie game with San Diego State with two or three minutes to go. So I, I don't know. If, if they get a couple of these pieces back, like Lendenberg, you know, they could absolutely be an NCAA tournament team and potentially see the higher than a 12 seed in 2020. What year is it? In 2025. Well, this I know. This I know, and I completely agree with you, Roger. He says, can't take Yale lightly. This I know. San Diego State will take no one lightly. It's just not happening. It's just not the DNA. That's not happening in this program right now. If they get beat, they get beat. It's not because they took Yale lightly. That I know. So I, I watch the way they practice. I watch the way they go about their business. It's just not in their culture um, to take someone lightly, especially at this time of year when you know that when this thing ends, and it does end for 67 of the 68 teams, when this thing ends, it ends. And that, that's the cruelness of March as well. And that's you know the beauty of this event, that only one team is standing at the end of the day, right? Um, let's see here. Yeah, you know, I, I didn't like to see it. I mean, I'm not rooting for I, you know, I'm not rooting for it again. But I'm just not saying that what happens with other teams in the Mountain West impacts San Diego State directly or indirectly. It was a, not a good finish for Nevada. They led by 17. The story I have for you on that is that in the middle of the afternoon, um, I think I was up the night before watching the Padres at three in the morning, and I'm like, I'm taking a nap, I'm watching the game. And I felt as if, just as an independent observer, Nevada was in complete complete control. It was like. Eight, nine, ten minutes left. They were up 13 or 14 when I was watching. I'm like, I'm taking a nap. The first thing I hear when I wake up, whenever it was, maybe an hour later, if that, 45 minutes later, is Nevada was in complete control until Dayton closed on a 24-4 run to win it, whatever, whatever. I'm like, are you serious? Because that the reason it surprised me is because you had one of the most veteran teams in America, one of the oldest teams in America, top 10, oldest team in America in Nevada, and they've got good veteran guard play in Blackshear and Lucas. They just weren't the type of team I thought would throw away. And I didn't watch it all. I saw some of the condensed highlights. I didn't watch it all. And Dayton hit some shots. I mean, they hit a lot of shots. And they're a great three-point shooting team, one of the best three-point shooting teams in the nation. But, man, the lead evaporated. Nevada made a play or two down the stretch. Lucas hit like an 18-footer that was tough to put him in front. Blackshear made a play to put him in front, but too much of Dayton. And I'm with you. It was a bad loss. I will say that. It was a very bad loss for Nevada. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I mean, if you haven't seen it, you'll, you'll have to find it on social media. I, I don't like, you know, you hate to see it. I mean, you just don't like to see it. I mean, obviously, you play all year for the NCAA tournament, and then you make a poor decision, and then it's a flagrant two, and you get ejected, and then your team loses. And, yeah, obviously, I mean, for Chad baker Mazar, um, it's really, really disappointing. <laughs> Brian says that I wanted to let you know you look great at the uh, post game party. Yeah, exactly. They all jumped up on the table in front of me. And there I was like, what am I supposed to do in this spot? 
Um, is this right? I didn't even realize that, Stephen. Thank you. Uh, Stephen saying Auburn was the only team in the country with both offensive and defensive efficiency numbers in the top 10. That's a recipe for a Final Four run, typically. That's what San Diego State was in 2020. I think they might have been 11th in one of the categories. They were like fourth in one category and 11th in the other. That's a recipe for a run. But when you lose one of your better offensive weapons in Chad Baker, Mazzara, um, and you have to overcome that in real time. And they did. I mean, they could have won the game even without having Chad. I mean, they absolutely could have. I mean, they had multiple, more than multiple chances to create separation or win the game, but they just didn't for whatever reason. For whatever reason. Um. Yeah, I mean, that, that that was my point from earlier. Like, um, you know, we can't take anyone lightly. This is where we're blessed to have Dutch. You won't let them. Yeah, I mean, again, if Yale wins, it's because of the way that they perform and play. It's not because San Diego State's looking past Yale. That is the last thing the Aztecs are doing. They're, they are not looking past anyone. But There's no one even to look past. The opponent, for if there is a Sweet 16, hasn't even been determined. So there's there's no one to be looking past. That I know. Um, John's saying, I think Yale might have a letdown like Furman did last year. He certainly can't plan on that. Um, I have no idea how they'll play on Sunday, just like I have no idea how the Aztecs will play on Sunday. Yeah, I don't know how to say this name. Um, the kid that shot 10 of 15 and hit all those threes. And um, Adam St. Butler needs to shut him down and we should do our thing. Yeah, again, obviously San Diego State's going to pride themselves on defense, but Auburn's right there. I mean, Auburn's a very similar defensive team to San Diego State, yet Yale still was able to rise and fire and go 9 of 20 from beyond the arc and still shoot, you know, 45-plus percent from the floor. So um, like Yale's been through it now, and they're going to go through it again, but I, I don't think it's going to be a surprise to them now because they just saw it with Auburn. Uh, I don't know. What's interesting is the Saturday games, tomorrow's games, the first game – is in the West in Salt Lake City, 1045 a.m. local, like San Diego State just played. You have Arizona playing at 1045, which is 945, by the way, in Tucson. Not that that matters. That's just for TV. It's like when San Diego State played last year at noon Eastern against Furman. That was 9 a.m. Pacific, but it was noon in the, you know, in the uh, time zone. So I think the earliest possible start, man, I, I, you know, it's Sunday – I, I truly don't know. I truly don't know. I, I don't know if it's going to be early in the day, the middle of the day, or later in the day. I, it's all TV dependent. What they want is what they get, just like this 1045 a.m. start, which, you know, I was concerned about and worried about in the end. Of it. it had no bearing. Like It's the NCAA tournament. The lights are on. There's 11,000 people in the building. It's a great atmosphere. The time, the start time had no bearing. I don't expect it to have a bearing on Sunday either, truthfully. Uh, Adam's saying, I'm not sure they can stop Ladie, even though Wolf is seven feet tall. I mean, he'll, he'll get a, a test from Wolf. It's a different assignment than UAB. UAB had athleticism. They didn't have that type of height, right? They didn't have the type of experience and wideness and height that Wolf provides. Um, will Yale double Ladie? Because if not, uh, you know, I don't know if there's really a player in the country that is capable of of slowing him one on one. Uh, we've watched this play out this year, and he's gone for 34 times maybe this season. Um, okay, let's see here. Um, just trying to catch up chat. Um, Tom saying I knew Ladi would win it before the game started. You know, I thought there was an opportunity if they were able to effectively get Ladi touches that he would be able to you know, do his thing because that's just who he is. And I didn't realize they weren't going to double him at all. But the way they defend, it's more about preventing touches. But once he touched the ball, he he's a He's just so tough, and he drew so many fouls, and he put them in trouble all night, whether it was Coleman, whether it was, um, again, Lendeborg, um, whether it was their like their third five. I mean, he, he had guys in foul trouble throughout the course of the game, all game long. Um, Adam says we will almost uh, sh surely have the early game on Sunday because Auburn lost, so it's another 5-13 C game. Yeah, sometimes they like that Cinderella story. Uh, last year we had the CBS game. Now, was it Saturday? It was that. CBS first game Saturday, which is great exposure. I mean, you're playing at noon Eastern on CBS. I remember that the, the uh, I mean, it's a, it's going to be big time ratings when you're playing on CBS. Obviously, this game was not CBS; it was on TNT. I just don't know. I, I we have to see what else transpires around the country because there's going to be eight games on Sunday. I don't know what the other seven are. I don't even know what's going to happen tonight because you have Alabama playing Charleston. You're right. I mean, if Alabama moves on, maybe they're the second game as the quote unquote power program, um, and then you have either St. Mary's or Grand Canyon. So I, I really don't know. It's it, TV networks making, um, you know, decisions and, and TV executives making decisions. So whatever they, um, 
think makes the most sense for them is the decision that they're going to make. And that's when San Diego State is going to play. Steve, how are you, man? He says, it seems that most of our guys have been scared to take threes for many games now. Ladine needs needs us to make outside shots so he has more breathing room and doesn't have to carry so much the load. You felt that today? I, I didn't really feel that, that they were tentative to take threes. I think they wanted to make sure they were getting good shots. I think UAB, the way they defend with their zone, they're almost tempting you to – they're like luring you to take the three, right? That's what they were trying to do. Where San Diego State – didn't want to settle. I think they wanted to get the best shot, not just the shot. Um, but I thought there were some catch and shoot threes in this game, like Miles Bird in the second half that I thought was huge. Elijah in the first half, Reese Waters in the first half. I didn't feel like they were tentative. I didn't think they forced threes. They only had 18 attempts. That's not a huge number. Now they're only five of 18. They have not been a great three point shooting team this year. They're capable of doing it. We've seen them shoot 45% a couple of times. It's a two or three game stretch in the Mountain West where they were shot like 45% over a three game stretch. So, I don't know. I mean, I think the game plan today was more like Ladie and get it into the paint and get downhill than just settle, so to speak, because that's not who the SX are. They're not, they're not built to hit 13 in a game. I think that they're more than happy to, to hit seven of them and shoot them at 35% and then play defense and do the rest on the interior and see if it's enough to win. Uh, let's see here. Just, Steven says, unless Waters has an open look from three, he's been forcing so many difficult shots. I thought he hit a tough shot in the first half. I thought he made a, a, a three. You know, I forget the look that he hit. I don't think it was a tough shot. You know, he just kind of rise and shot it up, shot it. Um, you know, he didn't have a field goal in the second half. I still think he's been a little more aggressive here since the start of the Mount West tournament. He played really well against Utah State, had those field goals here today in the first half. They need him, just like they need Micah, just like they need all these guys. So we just don't know when it's going to be Reese's night or Micah's night like it was last Friday against Utah State, but they're fully capable. And if Reese scores 14 on Sunday against Yale, that could be the difference between winning and losing. Same thing with Micah Parrish, and it goes on and on. Oh, it was beautiful. I mean, there were some beautiful steals from both Darion and Lamont in this game. Really, I mean, there was a lot of pressure on the guards. It was hard work. Eric Gaines, um, his teammates, it was hard work. Um, Obviously, against the Aztec guards, and Brian saying that steel monster dunk sequence by Lamont was beautiful. It really was. Gary, how are you, my friend? Good to uh, hear from you. Glad that uh, you're hanging out here on this Friday evening. He says, hi, John. Great story about the celebration. I held victory. As far as our game, Jaden was great. Lamont was excellent, but it seemed, it really seemed like we should have had a bigger lead at the half. Yeah, probably. It did feel like that. It was a six-point game. It felt like the Aztecs were double digits clear of UAB. I would agree with that, you know? Um, I would agree with that. That's how I felt at the at the half as well. Um, let's see. Yeah, and it, like to your point, it's survive in advance. And you you hear me say that a lot this time of year. I'm like, I don't want to overanalyze a win. Also, knowing that it's going to look so much different against Yale. Yale is a completely different team than UAB. Um, the style in which they play both offensively and defensively. Like if they score one more point than Yale, I'll sign up for that right now. And I think most people here would as well. Um, Voltum saying John Butler was outstanding today. Can Parrish have any consistency on the offensive side of the ball? Um, again, we've talked a lot about Waters and we've talked about Parrish. And there was, you know, I have to, there was a two or three game stretch where Parrish hit six or seven threes combined. Now, he might not have shot him at, at the same rate he was earlier in the season, but he's absolutely, you got to believe and they have to have the confidence that they can hit multiple threes in the game. Because, again, with San Diego State, like I just said, you hit seven threes in a game and you shoot 35%, and you're putting yourself in a position to win the game. They don't have to be perfect. That's not the, the goal of basketball. But they have to be confident. Um, and, again, Micah and Reese last Friday night against Utah State were a big reason why San Diego State won the game. Uh, I'll get back to it after I get to this uh, super. Thank you, T-Mac. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate your support of the channel, guys. If you are here, subscribe. Year on content for Aztec fans, smash the like button for me. Follow me on X at John Schaefer. Thank you for the supers by clicking the dollar sign below the chat box. Thank you for your memberships as well. Um, and he says, greetings from, how do I say that? Medellin? Medellin? Where is that? I should know. That's in South America? Am I crazy? <laughs> T-Mac. Uh, he says, thanks for the post-game commentary. I don't know if my Gen X heart can handle so many tight games. How about me, man? I'm sitting there, you know, courtside. I'm not on the air except for pre-half and post. I'm just... 
and kind of living vicariously through the team and living and dying on every moment. College basketball is an amazing sport. I mean, there's just so much that goes into it. Every call on the floor, every make or miss, one and ones, um, all the games, especially with San Diego State, seemingly come down to the final four minutes or so. So um, we'll take it in a win. We'll take it in a win, T-Mac, is what I would say. But greetings as well. Thanks for hanging out. Really do appreciate you um, hanging out as often as you do. So thank you so much for your support of the channel. And um, maybe yeah, – here's the thing. With Sunday, we'll just sign up for a win. Even if it's something that, that our hearts can't handle, I think we would just sign up for a win, no matter what the score is on Sunday. Um, okay, let me try – got another 15 minutes, I would say. So let me just kind of scroll through. And um, react like to this. It says classic Aztecs D today. Going to need a heavy dose of Ladi like today. Rest of the team doing the small things. We're going to need seven to ten points from our other season guys to keep this going. Go Aztecs. Yeah, two players in double figures today. But when you combine for 47 points from two players, that's kind of like having three or four players in double figures. That's like having four players score 12 points when you get 47 points. Or three players score 15 plus. So they had enough here today. Uh, they had five players in double figures against Utah State last Friday night. They had two here today, and that was enough, obviously, for the Aztecs. All right, uh, th there's always this type of reaction. Okay, SDSU is supposed to be a way superior team, a seven-and-a-half-point favorite team, yet we had to come back in the final two minutes. We lucked out with a matchup with Yale. Dutcher should have a good game plan. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how to fully react to it. The NCAA tournament is an unpredictable event, and a lot of people determine success or failure of a season based on 40 minutes, whether it's fair or unfair. And we can say that it's fair. It's the business that we signed up for, so to speak. To win in this tournament, no matter what Las Vegas says the point spread is, when it's not like a 116 matchup, is a good win. It's hard to win in this tournament. San Diego State all-time in this event is under 500. Uh, they've been to the Sweet 16 three times. It's hard to move on in this event. Win should be celebrated and enjoyed and not overly critiqued, in my opinion. So what? They were a seven-point favorite, and they actually it closed as a six-and-a-half-point favorite, and they won by four. Who cares? Who cares? Would we be feeling – and if they won by 40, does that guarantee that they beat Yale? It doesn't. It doesn't at all. And we don't know if they lucked out, quote-unquote, because we don't know what's going to happen on Sunday. Um, okay, let's see here. Um, just try to catch up in the chat. Yeah, I mean, this is a good point, Flipper. He says there's no Pac-12, and now the Mountain West will be the best conference west of Texas, at least. Maybe we can figure something out with the NCAA and the semblance of the two teams in the Pac-12. In the Pac-2, yeah, no, I, I think the the future for the Mountain West is is actually really bright or brighter because of what has transpired around them and. Obviously, the collapse of the Pac-12 wasn't advantageous for SDSU, but on the other side of it, there are some opportunities for programs in the Mountain West in both football and men's basketball. As you look at how these programs in the West have spread out through power leagues, I mean, the Mountain West has a chance to maintain some of the success if they make you know, the right decisions, maximize the number of teams that are going to get, hopefully, to the NCAA tournament moving forward, and that's for another day, is what I would say. Um. Yeah, I mean, Jeff, you know, I thought they ran some really good offense through Lamont Butler today. Um, some really good seal-offs from Jaden Ledee. Again, when he gets out in transition, he hit tough shots, did he not, guys? He hit two really tough fadeaways. So, again, this is where you go back to the confidence level. And there have been a lot of Aztec fans that have been critical of Lamont Butler throughout the course of the year, or Reese Waters, or Micah Parrish. And, by the way, it goes down on. It goes on, despite the fact that they're a five-seed and better than a six seed for just a fourth time in the history of the program. There's been a lot of criticism, and I get it. The expectations were super high. The Aztecs played in the national championship a year ago, and people are excited. And, the, and San Diego State has amazing fans. So it's all I, – I get it. I, I completely get it. But, I mean, Lamont, in the biggest moment of the season, was vintage and played one of his best games as an Aztec. And hopefully that continues again on Sunday. Um, yeah, it's fun. You know, this is an interesting region um, here in Spokane. So you have obviously, you know, you had this this Auburn Yale game, um, and the local, you know, had to localize it. We had Chad Baker Mazzara for Auburn, who spent a year at San Diego State and played the NCAA tournament, of course, 
with the Aztecs. And then you have these, these night games and you've got Alabama and Charleston, two teams that the Aztecs beat on their memorable run to a national championship game. And then you have the late game tonight in Spokane, again, in a different region, but here in Spokane between St. Mary's and Grand Canyon, two teams that the Aztecs played this year. So there's a lot of familiarity um, in the region. You had three programs in the state of Alabama, two have gone home with UAB and Auburn. And I don't even have an Alabama score in front of me, but I'm going to find it right now. And Alabama is rolling Charleston right now. Midway through the second half, they've scored 80 points. They lead by 22. They're going to score 100, it appears, tonight in Spokane. They have an elite offense. Um, San Diego State will not see it, at least right now, in the tournament. Because, again, they're going through a different region. They are in the West. Uh, they make the decision, Rich, at the conclusion of every day's games. That's right. So last night, I think it's pretty immediate. I think they have a plan as it gets late, and they might even make a decision in the final half of the final game. So, like, for example, tonight, like that St. Mary's game is not going to tip until really late. It's already 10 o'clock Eastern or about to be 10 o'clock Eastern, and there's still 11 minutes to play in the Alabama game. So that game's not going to tip until, what, after 8 Pacific, which is after 11 Eastern. Maybe we'll find out during that game, but it's going to be late. It's going to be well after 8 o'clock Pacific when we know. So I would say we'll know in the next two to three hours, but it's not going to be in the next 20 minutes. It'll probably be in the next two to three hours. Okay, it is. I thought it was in Columbia. I thought so. Thank you, team. That's super cool. I don't know what time it is in Columbia, but I appreciate you watching from Columbia. The, the magic of YouTube, man, it really is amazing. It really is. It's amazing. Uh, yeah, how do I say this? Medellin? Am I saying that right? <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah, you know, what I thought they did today, John, what are your thoughts on the bench? And do we know what type of DL plays mostly yet? Uh, you know, I'm thinking back on today. I mean, they, they would throw a double at Broom because Broom's a top five player in the country, like Jalen Lindy's a top five player in the country. But they wouldn't – they wouldn't um, – bring it immediately. They bring it from behind. And I don't know the level of success they had with it. I mean, he only had 10 field goal attempts, but he got to the free throw line a lot. I mean, he had 23 points and 13 rebounds. So it's not like they neutralized him. But it appears if they just played a lot of man and every once in a while they would throw a double at Broom. They're big and they're sturdy and they're, they're wide. I'm talking about Yale. Um, so, you know, this isn't some completely undersized. Like you think Ivy League maybe historically, like, oh, we're going to get this – this undersized group. That's not what the Ivy League is right now. you got really good programs in the league. I mean, Princeton last year is in the Sweet 16. They're playing Yale multiple times a year. So Yale is big, and their forward um, that we talked about earlier is a is a really capable player, and they got shooters on the floor. And shooters and 45% point shooting gives you a chance to win any game is what it does. Uh, Ryan says to me, this feels a lot like last year in the bracket with the number one overall seed, close game in the 5-12 matchup, other Mountain West teams blowing it. And now we have the 13 seed matchup in the second round. We touched on a little bit of this earlier, Ryan. Um, we'll see. There are some similarities how I feel right now. And I think, and this is honestly not to disrespect Furman. I thought Furman heading into that game. They had some really good offensive weapons. They did not play their best game. And the Aztecs deserve a lot of credit for how that played out. Um, and that was obviously such an amazing San Diego State team. And they really were like on full display for that Saturday game in Orlando. I, to me, it appears as if 30,000 foot view, Yale is a little bit more of a veteran, experienced, capable team than that Furman team a year ago. Like I look at Ken Palm right now, and I don't know where Yale is in the net to end the year. At Ken Palm, Yale's top 80. That's pretty good. I mean, San Diego State's 20th, Yale's 79. That's, that's not... You know, for example, UAB was in the low 100s. They were in that 100 range. Yale's better in um, Ken Palm at 79. So, you know, th they're they're good. I mean, they're very similar to UNLV at Ken Palm. They're not a similar team. But in terms of their offensive and defensive efficiency, they've been similar. Yale, at the end of the season, was 83rd in the net. That That's good. That's a good team. Um, they only had so many opportunities in a non-conference because they play in the Ivy League. Um, let's see here. No, I got you, Jeff. I got you. I'm not saying you were. I'm saying people were. He says, for the record, I'm not being critical of Butler. I think he needs more plays around for him. 100%. I, I'm with you, man. Completely. I'm just saying that there have been people, obviously, that have been critical of him. You know, I think that – tell me if I'm wrong. Did they do this in 2014 in Spokane? They went through a 12. And then do I have the seating right? Or did they go through a 13, then a 12, something like that, right? Was it New Mexico State and then like a – North Dakota or North Dakota State. So this is not the first time. And then, of course, there was last year as well. Um, 
Let's see. Uh, Force Ghost Fabio says, I like that Waters took six threes. He needs to get hot, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, it, you'd love to see him hit a couple. Uh, hit one here today, and again, I mean, he hits two, and then all of a sudden that opens up, and he scores, you know, 14 points in the game, and that's a huge lift, obviously, for the Aztecs. Um, okay, a couple of more. i got about five minutes. At the end of the year, I, I mean, this should be enjoyed. I hate the fact that the portal is open during the NCAA tournament. NCAA tournament is the best time of year, and this sport is about what happens on floor. When the season's over, I'm happy. To, I, I can't wait to talk about it. Everyone's excited about the future. You should be, but you should be excited about right now as well. We shouldn't, you know, the fact that the transfer portal is open while you know, the best time of year in this sport when everything's going on across the country, it's just, I don't know, it just doesn't seem like, can't we wait two weeks? Why do we always have to be in a hurry? Um, Flipper saying, hey, at least we won. I'm running for Utah State. Come on, Mountain West Conference. Yeah, if they win, great. And if they lose, it has no bearing on San Diego State either. <laughs> Does Jim know how to pronounce Yale? Uh, you know, yeah, he called Furman Furnum. And then he's like, Furnum has no shot against Virginia. And then they pull off like this miracle ending in the first round a year ago. Yeah, Brian saying Furman looked shy by our physicality the first 10 minutes of the game. What was interesting is they played a good defensive team a year ago in Virginia that was very physical, obviously, and defense first. But, yeah, I mean, we just punched first. The Aztecs did and didn't look back. Uh, Derek saying, not to say we're going to beat Yale, but if we do get UConn, it's going to take someone that hasn't played great lately to explode like Tremel last year against Alabama. If and when, we will have a series of conversations about it. I hope we have the opportunity to talk about it. I mean, this is amazing, Auburn. Right. So this idea that, you know, Yale's 80 at the Ken Palm and, you know, well, they just beat the fourth best team in the country. That on a neutral floor, 3,000 miles away from New Haven. That's a really impressive win. Yes, Chad Baker Mazar was ejected. That had to impact Auburn. How could it not? He's a very good player. But they should have had enough to overcome that and win, and they had chances to. They built double-digit leads in both halves and couldn't hold them is what happened. Uh, a couple more. Adam says, we had everyone hit some key shots today, and we finally got off to a good start and didn't get down big early. We have to make sure that happens again against Yale. UNLV was around 75 net. Yale saying, yeah, exactly. So that, that tells you about the type of basketball that they played this year. Um, yeah, it doesn't. I, you know, I don't know if that's true or not, Adam. I think, obviously, a lot of the teams that do play in the NCAA tournament end up with some of the better players in the portal because you have, you know, high major programs, and you've got – you know, the Dukes and the Carolinas and the Purdue's and, you know, programs like San Diego State as well. So a lot of these programs are going to get some of these elite players, but it just seems short-sighted and counterproductive is what I would say. Um, Auburn was a really good team, and they're staying home watching Yale play San Diego State. The Aztecs can beat any team on any given day. That's why they play the games. I, I think they would agree with that sentiment as well. Yeah, I mean, he's a good player, and I knew it coming in. People have talked about him. I mean, he is a load. Um, their forward, who, yeah, was having some success against Broome. Um, he's an impressive player. He's an impressive player. Appreciate you, Jeff. All right, guys, um, I'll have more for you later this weekend, uh, whether it's Saturday or Sunday and Monday. Full reaction to San Diego State, Yale, as we look ahead to the round of 32 for the Aztecs. Just 32 teams will remain. By the end of the night, San Diego State is one of them. They are a win away from reaching a Sweet 16 for the second time in as many years. If you are here, all I ask, whether you're here live or on replay, please subscribe. Would really appreciate it. I'm sitting in my hotel room in downtown Spokane. So if you are here, um, I would appreciate it if you're willing to subscribe. It doesn't cost you a penny. Just subscribe. Hit that like button for me. Follow me on X at John Schaefer, J-O-N-S-C-H-A-E-F-F-E-R. If you're here on replay, thank you for the super thanks. That means a lot. Um, appreciate your memberships as well. Um, do want to thank my title sponsor, Eric Lanier at Higher Impact Financial. If you have any, any needs, financial planning needs, set up a free 15-minute consultation with Eric to talk about your taxes, your retirement, your short-term financial planning, midterm, long-term, whatever it is. Eric can um, really assist in your financial future. He has done for me and my family. Just click the link in the description down below. Um, okay, until next time, Aztecs tonight over UAB in Spokane, 69-65. My name is John Schaefer. We'll catch up later this weekend. Get to Spokane if you can. Aztec fans were really good here today. If you're thinking about it, take a look at flights. Get here. Get to the Pacific Northwest. We'll see you on Sunday. Thanks, guys.